Welcome. So this video should be watched after you watch the Metasploitable Framework in Cali Linux intro, um, then the short video two, short video three, and short video four. So what this is going to be is a quick demonstration of how do I uh, use the Armitage software um, to kind of access Metasploitable Framework in a GUI. Um, and there's some pretty neat capabilities. It looks um, pretty sharp. It's user friendly. So I'm going to open up my um, Kali Linux in VMware. So this is Kali Linux 2021.3. I also have a Metasploitable virtual machine open um, at 192.168.70.129. This is a non-routable uh, non -routable IP space because we're practicing and looking, these, looking through these tools um, in a safe environment. This is all on my host machine because there's state, national, and international laws. Um, related to cyber exploitation and um, cyber law that you could easily cross using the Metasploit framework and Armitage. So um, I'm demonstrating here on a subnet unroutable on my host machine. So we're going to go into Kali Linux. And if we select um, the search bar from the Kali Linux icon and we write Armitage, we, we see it's not there. Right, so this is something we're going to have to install. So I'm going to open up a terminal window. Uh, let's blow this up a little bit, make this a little more readable for you. And the first thing we want to do is, is install it. So I'm going to go sudo. Um, let's do apt get install Armitage. Move that out of the way. Um, go ahead and load. Let that load. It's pretty quick. So um, won't have to pause the video or anything, clear the screen after that's finished. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna start um, system control CTL, start our PostgreSQL database. Make sure I type that in right. System CTL start PostgreSQL. And that'll go ahead and start that database because this again is like a wrapper on the Metasploit framework. Um, so it's going to save all of that information in the database. Then we want to initialize our Metasploitable Framework database. So MSDB, no nope, MSFDB, and we're going to go ahead and initialize that. Mine's probably already initialized. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, once you've done this, you won't need this step again. And clear this screen, and now we're ready to go. So we just do. Um, Armitage and let this thing run. So there's going to be a couple of prompts. The first one is the port number that it's running on your local host. Don't have to do anything. Just hit connect. Next one is yes, I'm okay with connection to my Metasploit framework that you run this service. Give it a couple of minutes here. Actually, maybe 20 seconds. So we will wait this out. And it's going to open up the application in a nice GUI. So this is what it's supposed to look like. And you may recognize that in the Metasploit framework, we have a bunch of auxiliary modules, exploit, payload, and post. If the font's too small, that's what it says in here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go to auxiliary. And in the earlier videos, I did scanner. And we, did, we just kind of went through a port scanner. So let's go port scan. And I'm gonna pick a sin scan and double click. This opens up the same, not the same screen, but a screen with the same information as if I said show options. Um, in the earlier video, you can see that this is preset with ports one through 10,000. And I'll do the same thing I did before. And I'll change it for ports one through 50. Um, I'm gonna put the R host, which is my target, 192, 168, 70, 129, right? When I go over and again, that was my metasploitable virtual machine that's local. So I don't have any legal issues. Um, this one, I don't know if you recall, the threads in my earlier video was one. This defaulted it to 24, which is much more reasonable. Timeout, not really. I'm going to take that 500 down to 50 and verify everything. And then I can launch that scan just like I did in the console view. And we have the same uh, results, ports 21, 22, 23, and 25. And it popped up this host, right? So now it knows this is one of the targets that we're tracking in our penetration test, it could be a whole subnet. So many different machines 
could be popping up here. Let's do the same thing that we did before and go to port 22. Let's see if SSH is running um, on that port like we would suspect in the version, just like we did in the earlier video. So instead of using a port scan, I'm scrolling to SSH and this SSH version scan is what we did before. So again, I need to put in the 192 R host, um, 168, 70, 129. Port 22, it, that is the one we're trying. Again, SSH could be running anywhere, but we're trying to see if there, we can get the version off of port 22. Threads is 24, makes no sense at all, but that's fine. I'm only going to one, it won't use them all. A smart timeout here. This one's only 30 milliseconds. I like that better. So I'm going to launch that. And you'll see that a couple of things happened. First, I had the same information here, right? This is the version of SSH running. It opened a new tab on the bottom, but now my machine, my machine turned into a, a, a Linux, right? I have the, the penguin here. So this version of SSH that we learned about runs on a Linux machine and it, it colored this Linux for us. We know that. Let's take it another level. Let's close out auxiliary. Let's go to an earlier exploit we did. Um, so I opened up exploit, I'm gonna multi. And you recall we did a Samba exploit earlier. I'm gonna open up Samba and grab the bottom one, which is user Mac script and open that up. Um, I still need the remote host. Let's put that in there. The port 139, that makes a lot of sense. It already linked the payload for me. So if I go ahead and launch this, this is the same process we went through before in the, um, in the Metasploitable console view, but look what happened now. Now that exploit was successful and you can see it turned my um, penetration testing target red, put some lightning bolts in here. I have that exploit, a tab now that shows that that was successful. The bind shell was successful and it attached and then backgrounded that session. Now, remember, uh, you recall when we did this in the Metasploitable Framework console, um, once the bind shell was connected, we could interact with it, right? Because we, we had root permissions on that target. Now, if we want to do that here, we just right click again on the machine. The lightning bolt shows that we are connected to it. And I just say, there's a shell on it. I can interact with the shell and I can do some other things, but I'm just gonna say interact. It gives me another tab at the bottom. And uh, just like a bind shell, we didn't really get the feedback. So let's just say, uh, let's just do LS, the list, the directory, and our, yet we're where we thought we were, right? This is the directory of the Metasploitable Virtual Machine. I can say, who am I? I don't know if you can see it. It says root and I can say username, tech A, and again, it will show me I'm on the Linux Metasploitable virtual machine. So this is a way really to pull together everything we've seen before about um, active reconnaissance. We did a port scan in Armitage uh, using really underneath it, um, the Metasploitable framework and the Metasploitable framework. So really using Nmap underneath it. Um, then we can do a version scan. We can take that information to see if it's coupled with an exploit um, and, and run that and, and go through this whole process right in Armitage with the graphical user interface. Um, so that's a quick rundown. I hope that was helpful. And that should be the last video of this series. All right, thank you.